Can humans live forever? You would probably say, no. But more and more scientists and researchers are saying that we will be able to live forever in a not-so-distant future. And just now, the most prominent researcher, Aubrey the Grey, has given us more information on how and when we're going to get there. You won't believe the price you'd have to pay to become immortal. This isn't science fiction and in this video you'll learn how all of this is going to play out. Humans have been trying to find a way to dodge death for years. Ancient Greek alchemists tried to create a philosopher's stone that would let people live forever, but humans have yet to beat death. But in the last decade and especially the previous few years, there has been great progress being made in that field and now we might be starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. If you kick the bucket within this short time left, you might be part of the last people to die of old age. How did these scientists that specialize in this field get the idea that immortality is now within our reach? Recently, Aubrey the Grey has been interviewed by Longevity Technology and given us a lot of new information about the state of research in the field of immortality. First of all, the catastrophic 2020 events have helped the government and investors realize the huge burden and price that old and sick people pose to the society compared to the young and healthy population. This likely changed their mind from previously thinking that longevity serves no monetary goal to them realizing the huge lift in burden of the younger generation and the increase of productivity that these rejuvenated people would bring to society. This shift in view on longevity has greatly increased the funding that longevity researchers, including Aubrey the Grey Sens Research Foundation receive. The amount of investors and money flowing into the field is also set to increase exponentially as research results and clinical trials start showing more and more results. So what is the state of longevity research at the moment and when will we see some results? Well, according to Aubrey, we're considerably closer to robust mouse rejuvenation than we were 10 years ago. The gap between the achievement of robust mouse rejuvenation and the achievement of robust human rejuvenation is in his view also coming down quite fast. The way we're improving the way we rejuvenate mice and eventually humans is also getting more and more clear as time goes on. At the moment he absolutely thinks that stem cell therapies are going to be, literally, an essential pillar of the portfolio of damage repair approaches that researchers pursue and they currently have a study going on where they're combining stem cell treatment with senolytic drugs to kill aging senescent cells to prolong a person's life. The amount of results they're getting right now is not even slightly comparable to what they were getting previously which makes the direction and speed in which this field of prolonging life is moving quite clear to see. The one that's been moving towards clinical trials the most rapidly across the board is undoubtedly stem cell therapy and that um, you know, it inspired people to go further eventually. And now we know so much more about how to control what we're doing with stem cell therapy. Every very much more optimistic. So as I said, there are several trials going on right now. Um, there are other trials going on in stem cell therapy for other things, but that's really the one you should be paying attention to because it's the one that's most classically, you know, a damage repair approach. Scientific researchers including Aubrey are now starting to become optimistic in terms of the time frame in which we could expect to reach the longevity escape velocity. In the life extension movement, longevity escape velocity, LEV, or actuarial escape velocity is a hypothetical situation in which life expectancy is extended longer than the time that is passing. For example, in a given year in which longevity escape velocity would be maintained, technological advances would increase life expectancy more than the year that just went by. When Aubrey the Grey was forced to talk about a time frame, has been consistently saying that he expects by that the year 2035, we'll finally have reached immortality or at least that we have a great chance to do so. Recently he has been getting more and more optimistic about this date and started mentioning it on his own without being forced to do so which definitely underlines his confidence in this time frame. When he makes a prediction of any nature, he is aggregating all of the steps and looking at all of the potential bottlenecks, the potential's delays, and evaluating what he feels they're likely to be in terms of magnitude. He thinks that actually the chance of somebody alive today benefiting from the longevity escape velocity and thus becoming an immortal and never getting sick as a result, is depending on how long ago they were born. 
If they're around 20 to 30 years old, it's at around 80 to 90 percent. At this point, the chance of someone who is let's say, 53, reaching that, is probably 40 or 50 percent on the other hand. One big criticism about longevity research is that it will only ever benefit rich and powerful people as the price will be way too high for the average consumer to ever take advantage of it. Aubrey the Grey and many other people in the longevity community think otherwise. Aubrey says that the cost to the end user is going to be an incredible, zero dollars. And the reason for that is that aging is so expensive that it would be economically suicidal for any country not to make these things available, irrespective of the ability to pay, to everybody who is old enough to need them. And thereby to allow those therapies to pay for themselves many times over really quickly, just by keeping the elderly, able-bodied and healthy in a position to contribute wealth to the general society. Whether or not this turns out to be true or not, we shouldn't miss out on the potential of immortality just because of a small chance of a powerful minority taking all of it for themselves. There are quite a lot of people interested in living forever, explains Dr. Pearson. There always has been, but the difference now is tech is improving so quickly, lots of people believe they can actually do it. He reveals that one way to extend life would be to use biotechnologies and medicine to keep renewing the body and rejuvenating it. No one wants to live forever at 95 years old, but if you could rejuvenate the body to 29 or 30, you might want to do that. This could be done in several ways, including genetic engineering that prevents or reverses the aging of cells. Alternatively, you could replace vital body organs with new parts. Many scientists around the world are working on creating human organs using 3D printers loaded with living cells, which could one day make human organ donors redundant. But regardless of all these new inventions or great-looking prospects in the field of longevity, not everything is always going to plan. While investments and government support into longevity research is growing at the moment, investors and the government aren't always being rational or can shift priorities at any point they seem fit. For example, if there's another year like 2020 where resources had to be shifted from one area of research to another. For example, BioNTech had to move from cancer research to developing vaccines to supply the world with. But maybe even that will turn out to be a good thing as their new findings and resources due to the amount of money they made from vaccines will greatly help their research and they even said that a cure for cancer isn't far off anymore now that they're working on it again. But this will be discussed in a future video. Another question is whether or not our society is even ready to deal with a huge percentage of our population never dying. Will it lead to overpopulated areas? How will we produce enough goods for all these people? It's clear that now is the time for the government to start looking into how this will all be regulated and dealt with in a proper manner as by 2035, they could already be too late in that regard. So what is your opinion on potentially being able to live forever by 2035? Would you even want to take part in it or are you fine with living just 85 years and having a finite amount of time on this earth? Maybe you think it gives you purpose. Perhaps you even think all this isn't possible in the first place. Please tell us about it in the comments. Um, so drugs have been developed now that are the first step towards getting rid of these cells. They don't work all that well, but they work well enough that the company that's spearheading them is now, re now valued at over a billion dollars, United Biotechnology, based over here in San Francisco. Um, and uh, other companies are coming along, kind of do things in a slightly more sophisticated way. Um, again, clinical trials, you know, going to happen this year, so I'm told. That's the, that's, the new, that's the word on the street. Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.